how can an entire civilization not know who she is? <laughs> like, how good of a secret keeper is that? Odin it group, happens, man? dude. That's how it happens. Like, for instance, recently I went to Gujarat and I went to this uh, memorial uh-huh. for this, like, freedom fighter. His name was Shamji Verma. And apparently he was the bomb, dude. Like, he did everything. Like, he set up this house in London where they used to meet and have these revolutionary ideas. He sponsored scholarships for people. And then as you come down, if the history books don't mention you, eventually you don't know who the person is. Okay, so Hela is Dr. Shyamji Verma. Shyamji Verma, yeah. <laughs> Look him up. Mancha. In a world filled with war, hate, suffering, and Justin Bieber, two guys fix it all with a battle about a movie. One film. Two opinions, one coin, two sides. They feud. You decide. It's time for Film Feud. Hello and welcome to another episode of Film Feud, the podcast where we debate whether top rated movies should be top rated. I'm Vidur. And I'm Vikram. Hi Vikram. What's up dog? Ready to feud today? Always. Mind telling the good folk what we do here? Sure thing. We take a top-rated movie, we toss a coin, heads argues for, and tails argues against. That's right. And the movie we're feuding this week, I'm pretty excited about, because it's Thor Ragnarok. Copyright. That doesn't mean anything. I just like Led Zeppelin. Oh, that's right. That's right. A very prominent feature of this film. And the marketing and the trailer especially. Yep. That sequence. Yeah, so when did you last watch this movie? I'm assuming when it came out? Yeah, I think I saw it once after as well. Oh, you must have liked it to do that. So you watched this movie in theatres? Yes. And are you willing to reveal how you felt about it? No. Except for the fact that you like the Led Zeppelin song in it. I like Led Zeppelin, period. I see. Interesting. Thank you for your thoughts. Always welcome, man. Should we just spare the shenanigans of trying to hide our emotions and go to the coin toss? Yeah, let's do that. I think that's a good idea. Sounds good. Well, I'm going to be tossing the coin. And I got heads. <laughs> Led Zeppelin is the only thing I liked about this movie. This movie was a fun romp. What a what a game changer for the Thor franchise. So fun. Did, <laughs> did you have fun in theaters? Vikram, did you have fun in theaters? Only when Led Zeppelin was playing. Vikram, Vikram, Vikram. <laughs> Vikram. Didn't you have fun in the movie? No, bro. No, I think it was overkill. They just like kept going for these jokes and stuff. It didn't really work well. Oh, man. I can't wait for you to just squirm your way through this feud. This movie tried so hard to be Guardians and I can't wait to jump into it. Oh, so you like Guardians you don't like this movie. What else? You hate this movie. You hate Marvel. I can't wait for all the things you'll profess in this feud. All I know is I'm not looking forward to watching it again. What bullshit. I can't wait to watch it again. Should we do it? Let's do it. But before we begin our episode, a quick shout out to Hubhopper. Hubhopper is India's very own podcast app with the largest directory that brings you thousands of unique shows and stories from every imaginable genre. You can now listen to your favorite podcast, Film Feud, on Hubhopper. That's H-U-B-H-O-P-P-E-R. So go ahead and download the Hubhopper app today from the Player App Store. And if you like it, review it and share it with your friends. And with that, let's go watch the movie. Dude, how good is this movie? Oh my god, that was awesome. It's as good as I remember. It's so funny. What an experience. It's even better when you don't watch it in a theater. Because then you can absorb all the intricacies. You're not like completely immersed in the visuals, which are amazing, by the way. And every joke hits. And even though you know it's coming, it's hilarious. How does he do it? How does Marvel do it? How does it knock it out of the park? In my head, I'm just picturing Thor, Full Thunder. Copyright, I'll stop. But still, man, so good. You're speechless, I get it. What can you say? Are you done with your prepared monologue now? Jesus, man. I could filibuster you for this movie, for sure. There's absolutely no chance. You said how good is this movie. It's not good at all. It's not good at all. All. There's just... I don't even know where to start. I want to start with the director firstly. Taika Waititi. Now a legend. 
now like a legend new zealand comedy director i happened to watch this movie after i watched thor ragnarok the first time what we do in the shadows i'm sure you loved it hilarious it is everybody loved it that's why he got to direct thor this guy i mean i'm sure he's like huge in new zealand and you can see these traits in him like he's never made a big budget movie right and that's the genius of marvel no yeah. it kind of showed man if you think about it he has some promising talent but he's not ready yet when did it show all throughout the movie so i'll tell you what it wasn't missing on spectacle that's for sure the movie yes but it was overloaded with it with spectacle and with humor to fill in gaps in the storyline and the plot and everything else like there's so many holes in stitching everything together in this movie and maybe it's not entirely his fault like i totally grant him that because the suits the marvel execs i'm sure had a lot of say in terms of how this movie comes out right and they basically like they 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 went him they went to him and then they say like come up with this body of work which is a healthy mix of like deadpool and guardians and that's actually exactly what the memo said i'm pretty sure and he tried doing his best so i can't really blame him completely i'm sure the marvel execs had a big big hand or a big role to play in the outcome of this movie but it really fell flat man and do the marvel execs have knocked it out of the park they take either independent or genre directors the next black panther movie is by the guy who made Fruitvale Station. They have got this thing to under science, man. To like pluck a sort of lower key director, put their like effects team to work, put their budget to work, and come up with something that actually has the vibe of like a true artist, the director, in like a big budget movie. And that's what showed here. What we do in the shadows is hilarious, but it's very, it's like beyond genre. It's a vampire mockumentary where Taiko Waititi himself plays the lead character. So I guess he likes acting. I, I think he was an actor or a stand-up or something in New Zealand, which is why he plays a uh, Korg in this movie as well. And uh, he just brought his own style to this movie and made it into a comedy. We're going to be talking about the humor and the comedy um, in a little bit. I have, I have some thoughts there, but I bet they're very non-humorous. But this this movie, man, like it's it's kind of weird. How I mean, I totally see it. I totally understand. Well, I don't understand completely, but I know why the Marvel execs have gone this direction with this movie because they saw the success of Deadpool and the Guardians, and they saw how well that tone in a movie does, and they they wanted to like sort of sort of like ingratiate all of that into like almost all of their movies now. So I understand the whole humor bit, but when you overuse humor and when you overuse special effects to a point where it's very clearly sort of filling in the gaping holes in the movie as a whole it's it's it doesn't make for a good watch like the humor for example it was done pretty tastelessly if you t- if you think about it it's only the last joke i'll grant you the very every, last thing no Paul every says. every serious situation is diffused by a joke every time someone new comes up every time a new scene starts it starts with a joke or a hilarious outlook or something i'll grant that matt damon was absolutely wasted no no he wasted he was wasted his whole purpose was it it goes to show you shouldn't take the movie too seriously it's like fourth wall but, breaking right no, but that, matt damon in that, that entire scene could have been done so much better it could have been done so much better but also the, can we call matt damon in this movie fat damon please <laughs> <laughs> and there's like unnecessary jokes everywhere which really killed the flow of the movie by the end of it man clearly humor is overused because the story is otherwise bland you, like hollow would you watch a comedy and say humor was overused did you watch deadpool and say humor was overused it wasn't. you saw it as a comedy right? no it wasn't overused but, in deadpool but that's because you saw the movie as a comedy here you're seeing the movie as like thor 3 No, 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 no. That's not true. That's not true. I, mean, I will, I will grant you that stakes are undermined by humor in this movie. I will, but that's because the movie is a comedy. Even in Deadpool, right? There is some sort of a story, and that story doesn't feel hollow. It's it, it, this movie has so much story and stakes. It's and absolutely hollow. Coming, another thing I'll grant you is like it reminded me a lot of Wonder Woman, where like Thor discovers magic thunder powers at the end. Thor's like third movie and slash is like tenth on screen appearance or whatever it is. They found like a legit arc for him. They gave him a nice little haircut. They made him funnier. Nice little haircut. Yeah. By funnier, I just want to. I just want to jump in there. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, like you said, tenth appearance by Thor in in the MCU. It's been it's all been... of a sudden. No, let me complete. All of a sudden, Thor is like the slapsticky, dumb, goofy guy, the typical courageous hero dude. He's basically Chris Pratt from Guardians. All of a sudden. When did this movie? Before this, he was this serious like. He sat some time. He's hung out with Tony Stark a lot. <laughs> He's hung out with Loki a lot. Come on, you cannot justify. You can't give a reason for why that's happened. Of course, he's I'm hung out saying. with Loki all his life. Maybe he had a joke book, dude. Who knows? <laughs> no way. We don't get man. to know what he does in the middle. This is this is very clearly like the execs seeing like, oh, that Guardian Stone, that that superhero angle, the Tony Stark angle really works. So let's just make Thor into that. And well, what voila. was the last movie Thor was in? 
I don't know, man. You should know. You're like the Marvel guy. I actually do know. I think it's Avengers too. Every movie I've seen Thor in in the MCU has always been Thor with like the super serious outlook. Thor, no, Avengers too had that dinner party scene where Thor was joking around about who could pick up the hammer. Remember? Oh, one scene. And then the entire movie is super serious. That's like a five-year arc, bro, on the character becoming funnier. No, man. Like, this entire movie, Thor, even when he's fighting people, like, supposedly who's super scary and stuff, he's, like, being slapsticky and stuff. It's literally as if the exec- execs or the director went up to Thor. They're like, yo, go watch Guardians, then go watch Deadpool. And once that's done, go watch them again. Maybe Thor watched some funny movies in the meantime. <laughs> I don't know, man. I didn't. I didn't like that. I didn't appreciate it because you spend so much time on building a character, especially over years and years and years, and then all of a sudden you just flip it because you don't see it working. But the character has been changing, and they got it wrong. They got the character wrong the first time around. They made him too Shakespearean, too godlike. His but hair they, was too bleached. They shouldn't have done it so drastically, right? The whole change. It's drastic because you watch this movie after, without having seen Ultron. But if you watch it and realize that it's been years and years. It makes sense. No, it doesn't. He's coming to his own. He's like all this powerful. That's what. And he becomes this goofy slapstick. You know, oh no, sir, good sir, please don't cut my hair. No, by the light of Odin's beard. Come on, dude. Like he's just all over the place in this movie, man. And I, I, I understand what they're trying to do. It's which is essentially make but dollars. Also, on some level, who cares? I it care. It fun. I care. It's it a movie. It it's a movie with a character who's been fleshed out over ten different movies, and the character just completely switches. It's yeah. kind of annoying if you think about it. I mean, James Bond character used to switch once in a while. It's a progression. It's not a switch. It's not like he'll go back to not being funny or something. I would call like it a digression. No, that's not what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the opposite of progression is. I actually look forward to the sort of genre blending even more in uh, future comic book movies. Let me guess. I think the next Ant-Man movie, I know the one's coming out this year, but the next Ant-Man movie should be horror. Perfect candidate. Giant ants. Everything huge. It'd be like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids meets like, you I mean, don't know. You mean, you mean Ant-Man and the Wasp should be horror? Well, I think they made that one already before the success of Ragnarok. But they should just experiment with genres more. Right. It works so well. The comedy in this movie didn't work well. Comedy in Guardians 1, for example, Do you works really, really well. Is a comedy? Guardians 1 is not a comedy, for instance. This movie is a comedy. This movie is as much as a comedy as Guardians 1 is, for example. This movie was funnier than Guardians 1 and like no the hit way. miss ratio. Really? Just because Guardians 1 like lighthearted and I funny. think Guardians 1 was extremely, extremely fresh as a movie. And this movie just tried to do what that movie did, replicate it, and not well enough. It fell flat in so many ways. Like, there were there were jokes which are, like, present where you would not have required a joke at all. And because it's, just, it's a comedy. Oh, man, it's not a comedy, dude. All right, I guess we have to move on from that point. Why don't we jump to Hella? What a natural, seamless transition. I know, they have it's a sister natural. all of a sudden. They're like, hey, you have a sister, bro. That was very sherlock <laughs> Did you watch the latest season of Sherlock? I did, I did. That reminded me of Sherlock so I much. I mean, I get, I get they're all like 500 years old and shit, but like, I mean, you gotta know if you have a sister, dude. And she's more powerful than you. It's so sherlock isn't it? And, and no one in Asgard knows she exists. Remember that one yeah, scene? But, uh, but unless you like rip off the painting yeah. and then it's like full of her basically. Yeah. And like that basement with all her like dogs and stuff. <laughs> I mean, the entire Asgard is in front of her. That first scene when she's in Asgard, she's like, I've come, it's come to my realization that no one knows who I am. Yeah. How can an entire civilization not know who she is? <laughs> like how good of a secret keeper is that? Odin it group, happens, man? dude. That's how it happens. Like for instance, recently I went to Gujarat and I went to this uh, memorial. Uh-huh. For this, like, freedom fighter. His name was Shamji Varma. And apparently he was the bomb, dude. Like, he did everything. Like, he set up this house in London where they used to meet and have these revolutionary ideas. He sponsored scholarships for people. And then as you come down, if the history books don't mention you, eventually you don't know who the person is. Okay. So, Hela is Dr. Shyamji Varma. Shyamji Varma, yeah. <laughs> Look him up. Dude, I, I loved how Anthony Hopkins told these guys that they have a sister. And then pulled a Luke Skywalker and peaced out. Like, literally, literally like five seconds before she showed up. Yeah. He's yeah. like, yeah, you have a sister. She's like Ragnarok and stuff. Okay, I'm leaving. Huh? And then he just like like vanished. So they reshot that scene, by the way. Because apparently it was shot somewhere else. And then Taika Watiri was like, I wanted it to be more majestic. Like on these moors or whatever. Wherever he was standing on the ocean. And uh, that's why I remember when the trailer came out. Uh, Hela's destroying the hammer. And then the same shot wasn't used in the movie. It left me very confused. Then I looked it up. Apparently they reshot the whole scene. Dude, you know, one thing you got to start doing is stop watching trailers, man. I know, man. They I completely, know, what can like, you do? Like, you, like, get excited, like, a year and a half. Before. It's so impossible to avoid. Like, I watch the Black Panther one right now. 
I, I saw I saw one. I think they've come up with a couple of teasers. I saw the teaser and not even the trailer. And then I was like, yeah, this movie looks good enough for me to like go to the hall and watch it. But I'm not going to watch. I just trust me, especially with these superhero MCU type movies. Just stop watching the trailers because they reveal so much. This trailer was awesome, though. If you remember, yeah, but which, then which, which I don't, I don't, I which transitions it. me to the music in the movie. This was oh. the immigrant song trailer. Okay, okay, it was I've, so badass too. That, that's and uh-huh. I didn't think they would use, and I think a lot of people felt this way. You think uh, because of these DC movies that have this trend recently, they use like some epic song in the trailer. Suicide Squad being the biggest example of this. Yeah, they had the Bohemian Rhapsody trailer. Yeah, it was awesome because like it was Bohemian Rhapsody superheroes. Cut only good thing about that movie. It's the only good thing, right? And it was like a trailer company that cut it together. Mm-hmm. And then like the actual movie didn't use Bohemian Rhapsody. They used like random other like. I mean, with that movie, who knows what the actual movie was. Yeah, who knows what went wrong there. But in this case, so they have the immigrant song in the trailer. It's awesome. The last movie to use it, which I also remember actually like really vividly was Girl and the Dragon Tattoo. They used like a cover or something of it. Yeah, yeah, the cover, yeah. Which is pretty cool. Like for that movie, it was kind of different. And then they just get to it, man. The movie starts. They had, he has that scene with like Serta or whatever his name is, the fire monster. Uh And then he's just like bashing people over the hammer and it's like the immigrant song. And I was like, man, this is awesome. They actually used in the movie. Worked great. And then it's like almost subversive. You think like they're done with it. And then it comes right to the climax of the movie when he goes into like full literal god mode. Thunder mode. Thunder mode. Uh-huh. Oh man, it was awesome. The use of the immigrant song in this movie. You don't even need to talk about other music, just the immigrant song alone. I actually agree. And um, yes. that, that ties into my point. It's literally... I have two huge gripes with this movie. One is the humor, obviously, which we've discussed already. And the other is the music, the scoring of the movie. So the movie scoring is done by this dude called Mark, Mark Mothersbaugh. Is, am I getting that right? Mothersbaugh. And he has actually never scored a major motion picture ever. His biggest ticket to success is scoring Rugrats. Do you remember Rocket Power, the show that used to come in Nickelodeon when we were kids? No. So he scored Rocket Power. He's He's been a musician. Like, he's had, like, an altern- alternative, like, electronic band and stuff like that. But he's never scored a motion picture. And this movie score literally had such a heavy reliance on Led Zeppelin and especially Immigrant Song. It just it just felt like it was literally Immigrant Song, beginning, end, and then in the middle, just little turd pieces mixed to add time. Horrible, sure. horrible scoring. Sure. Pieces. Literally horrible scoring. And they're like, okay, yo, we uh, immigrant song or oh, crazy action scene. Okay, it's, it's about to waver off. It's about to waver off. Okay, boom, immigrant song again. They use it twice, to be clear. And one was in, the in like the biggest fight scenes in the movie. Yes. Well, not the, except the Hulk scene. One. Except the Hulk scene. Or the Hulk one. Yeah. We get the Hulk, by the way. But I will somewhat grant you Marvel movies are infamous for their very, very weak scores. There have been exceptions to this. For instance, the Avengers theme is fairly memorable. Uh, I guess Spider-Man Homecoming was considered okay. But in general, this has been a weak spot of Marvel movies. Right. This movie, perhaps the same. I'm also not someone who like pays too much attention to it unless it's like really good, like Star Wars. But the immigrant song made up for it. Like suddenly this is something super memorable about a score, you know. And even the DC movies, well, they had the Wonder Woman theme recently. But before that, the last thing I remember is like Hans Zimmer Superman. Mm-hmm. They haven't done anything memorable. Their scores are like on the Oh, no, I better. agree. I agree. And in no way I'm comparing it to DC movies. No, I, I hate they... the Wonder Woman theme, by the way. I don't like it oh, at really? all. It's yeah. too much. Yeah, I don't like it at all. But just just saying as a movie, this movie, like it, it doesn't bode too well when you're relying so heavily on one song. It's a great, it's a great bloody song. It I love that me, song. Man, I made it memorable enough. You know, like, yes, in general, I do have a problem with how Marvel movies are scored because it, as someone who doesn't like notice it too much, I need for something to call out to me. Like, for instance... Uh, Man of Steel really, really stuck with me. You know, Hans Zimmer, of course, like legend. And uh, Wonder Woman theme, at least, like, it was memorable. Like It's unique. I yeah, give it that, yeah. So, okay. I, I grant in general Marvel movies have weeks to it, but I think the Immigrant Song, listen, they threw money at the problem, mm-hmm. right? Led Zeppelin, very famous for not releasing their songs to movies. So they probably paid a hefty dime. And clearly worth it, man. It works. They used it in the trailer. They used it twice in the movie. Worked all three times for me. I guess, I guess. But, I mean, the score outside of the Immigrant Song has to, has to, obviously it can't be at par with something like that. But it has to come close, man. And it was really, really shabby. And uh, this guy, um, I just hope he doesn't make any cinematic, extravagant movies anymore. I mean, it'd be, it'd be better for him. Of course he's going to do that. The box office performance of this movie alone is going to make him do that. Which I'm kind of very glad about. I love the box office performance because it also crushed Justice League, which I had mixed feelings about. 
But man, it's great. Audiences know a good movie when they see it. Oh my God. And word of mouth works. Why don't we go back to something you brought up, which is Hulk. Uh-huh. The trailers reveal Hulk, which goes to your point. Like, I, I wish they hadn't, you know. And hey, you remember that uh, he's a friend from work line that they showed in the trailer? And of yeah. course, he was in the movie. Yeah. Apparently, that line was suggested to uh, Chris Hemsworth uh-huh. by like a Make-A-Wish kid who was on the set that day. Oh, really? And then it ended up in the trailer and being, like, super loved, like, as a line. Just, That's nice. Because it, like, weirdly defines the way Thor sees his role in the Avengers as well. Found oh, like, strongest, about, right? strongest Avenger and all of that? No, 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 because he sees it as work. He calls him a friend from work. Right. Instead of a friend, you know? So, to, to like, I'm just imagining Thor with a briefcase walking in the <laughs> Avengers building. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that line was uh, not ad-libbed, but suggested. I know you're going to hate on this, but Taika Waititi said that 70, 80% of the movie was improvised in dialogue. Oh, really? Not like purely improvised, but you know how they do it, right? Multiple takes right. and you get to something good by the end. Got it. So yeah, huge chunk of that. Because again, he's like an independent filmmaker, you know? He made a, an independent comedy movies and that was part of his process. Kind of like Paul Feig does it or maybe Chad Apatow. Hmm. Hmm. And Chris hmm. Hemsworth is ass. widely considered... Huh? Ass? What do you mean ass? Were you about to say ass? Because what, what Freudian <laughs> reveal is this? <laughs> Chris Hemsworth is ass <laughs> at acting. No, you don't think so? I think he's horrible. Are you thinking about Chris Hemsworth's ass right now? Absolutely not. Just Chris Hemsworth okay. is ass understand. at acting. The, this, he is complete buns this, the, at the, delivering <laughs> lines. <laughs> this attempt to uh, hide your Freudian desire for Chris Hemsworth to she by to she. ass into a verb is not working. <laughs> he is absolute exactly, yeah. buns at the art of acting. Stop saying buns and ass, firstly. He's so bad. He's great. At what? He's better at comedy than he is at other stuff, in fact. He's good at nothing. He should be a model, dude. He should be a model. He'll he be great at that. He, he should only model. be a model. He's a model for Thoriel. <laughs> <laughs> with his hair. He should only Have be a model. Have you heard the joke? It's a Thor joke that Chris Hemsworth has told on talk shows. But uh, basically, Thor ends up uh, sleeping with this woman and, uh, you know, at, like uh, after like a club or something. And uh, he wakes up the next day and he says, uh, by the way, like, by the way, I'm Thor. And she says, uh, you're Thor. I'm a mess down there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <ew. laughs> Anyway, I think Chris Hemsworth is uh, a fine actor. Okay. A, a, a fine actor? A gentleman and a scholar. Okay. All right. Uh, the face of Australian tourism and fairly good at comedy. He was sort of just wasted in Ghostbusters. Which I saw, unfortunately. I completely forgot he was in that movie, yeah. That's Paul Feig's fault. But I think he just uh, was utilized perfectly here. He has some serious comedic chops. And, and Taika Waititi didn't just decide that, oh, this is my script. He worked. He saw what Chris Hemsworth could pull off. And then that's why he did it. Oh, yeah? He told you? He told press junkets that I Googled. <laughs> it's, it, I just think, like, dude, this is going to catch on so hard right now. Of course, it'll take DC, like, a long time. But I bet, like, by the time they get around to, like, Shazam, I bet Shazam will be a comedy movie. I I mean, I guess, knowing by what DC and the execs, I'm sorry, Marvel and the execs are doing, every movie should be a comedy movie because that's what that's what's getting them the dollar-dollar bills. So. No, it's not comedy. It's like, Infinity War is not going to be comedy. That's going to get them dollar bills. Spider-Man Homecoming was, like, a high school movie. That's almost a genre movie. You know, they they took the weakest character from the Avengers, probably, especially the straightest character. Well, I guess Captain America is the straightest character, but close enough. And they made him into an entertaining... This is like how they said in that Bollywood movie that I'm forgetting. Was it the dirty picture? Where Vidya Balan goes like, oh, entertainment, entertainment, entertainment. <laughs> That's all that matters, dude. They made this movie so goddamn entertaining. No, they tried to. I will... I, I, it's very clear to see that they tried to and there were parts that worked, but mostly it didn't work. Think about this. It doesn't have to be the comedy route all the time at all. I, I Look at what they did with fucking... There was heart. There was heart in this movie. Think about this. Look at what they did with Civil War, for example, right? It's not a comedy movie by any means. And they did such a good job. Everything, the story, the script, the characters, everything was fleshed out well. It didn't feel hollow. It didn't feel like just, just, just like stuck together in like this gooey mashup of like just absolute crap which this movie ends up being by the end of it you know what i'll grant you in terms of stuck together is i thought like a chunk of the the second act with hulk and the grandmaster jeff goldblum going full 
Nobody stopping him. Just go full Jack Goldblum. He should he should have toned down, don't you think, a little bit? No, dude. When you have Jack Goldblum in that makeup, you just let him be, man. It worked, dude. Like that. Okay, mostly it did work, and I was kind of yes, liking what he did. Granted. But there were these two particular scenes which stuck out, man. That one scene where um, that Valkyrie chick, the one forty two, whatever yeah. she. And then she like uh, she she gets paid for for capturing Thor, and then she's leaving. And she just brushes her hand on Jeff Goldblum's face, and that expression he has. <laughs> Do you remember that? What yeah. I'm talking about? And then there's this other scene of of when he's like talking to Loki and Thor, and he's like, "Oh, we're all gonna die or something." And she just has this one expression, where he's like, eh, like moving his eyes, and that kind of like went a little bit overboard, but. I mean, overall, it was good. But yeah, it was awesome. And also, you know, the Grandmaster and the Collector, like Benicio del Toro's character from Guardians, uh-huh. they're like brothers or some shit in the universe. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, oh yeah, yeah you're right, you're right. And I read about this like, too. Super out there. Yeah, yeah. And um, another thing I wanted to talk about is no, no, wait. Before we move on, we're in the second act and the oh, okay. Grandmaster and whatnot. Uh-huh. Hulk, dude. Hulk's presence in this movie they made Hulk comedic. They finally gave Hulk a character. And you know what? Like, it might seem like very self-serving to this, like, comedy movie. That actually is not that far from Hulk's character in terms of how he interacts and behaves in certain situations. Like, if he's calm, unless he's mad, he's actually, like, capable of interaction, capable of speech, which, again, he hadn't done much of in the past in the uh, MCU. And uh, this, like, kind of straight from the comic books, you know? A lot of that sort of grandmaster element had to do with planet Hulk anyway. The reveal of Hulk, though spoiled, was still super fun. Loki's reaction to the Hulk, it makes you think back to the original Avengers, which is like such a joy and kind of the best part about the MCU being so like drawn out and related and interconnected. And uh, I just loved it, man. They made Hulk a real character without involving Bruce Banner for the most part. It's awesome. What I don't understand is, um, um, I haven't read too many of the Hulk comics, is that Technically, tell me, like, explain this to me. If he's if he's calm and if he's chilling and he's like in a more in, in not in that like a rage mode where he can actually talk to people around him, should he technically become Bruce Banner? So no. Well, in uh, Age of Ultron, they kind of said that uh, he's always angry, or was that no, no, that was Avengers one. Basically, right. like Bruce Banner risked losing himself more and more, and Hulk like began to take control until he had almost had like permanent control. So it wasn't like certain that. Bruce Banner would ever come back. And clearly it did. And now, once again, it's not certain that Bruce Banner will ever come back after he heroically sacrificed himself by <laughs> committing suicide on the bridge, essentially, even though he thought he wasn't doing that. Got it. Got it. Okay. Also, I mean, another answer to your question is it doesn't matter because entertainment, entertainment, entertainment. entertainment. Okay. I got it. <laughs> and and I guess that's going to be the answer to my next question for you, which is... Just say it after me before you even ask. <laughs> entertainment, <laughs> entertainment, entertainment. I love, I love, I absolutely love Doctor Strange, the movie. Okay. Why was he in this movie? Just to, just to, to stitch up. universes. Yeah, of No, course. just to stitch up that post credit scene from, a, from Doctor Actually, Strange. Actually, the post credit scene was shot by Taika Waititi to make use of the Doctor Strange sets. Before got they it. were got it. unbuilt. Got it, got it. Got it. But in general, it was like a great way. Firstly, it also made Doctor Strange a little more lighthearted after the previous movie. He already was as a character, but in general, within the Doctor Strange avatar, uh-huh. he also became a little fun, you know, giving Thor some beer and making Loki fall from the sky for like 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Although his presence does suggest that he could have done a lot more to help with the Hela situation. But, yeah. you know, that's what happens. No, he, he just he just cares that Loki's on planet Earth and then like, Hela shows up and he's all like, yeah, I got I got things to do. Vikram? <laughs> entertainment? <laughs> entertainment? <laughs> Come on, man. You can't look at these movies with a microscope, you know. I can't. I can't. So I'll stop. Um, can we uh, just talk about a few more characters? So we've spoken about Hulk. Great. Can, can, I, can, can we talk about one character that I really want to actually pick your brain about a little bit sure what are Loki's powers exactly Loki's powers are mischief mischief <laughs> yeah mischief so like he he has that like that mind thing like a spock and then he has like this he can like make various forms of himself uh huh am uh-huh. I on the right track yeah and then that's it and then he's, he's really cool with knives and stuff yeah apparently okay. and then also he can like take a beating because he's a god Right, of course. You know? So that's how it is, you know. It, so no it, clearly defined powers, actually. Just like, just like stuff here and there. Like, it's they, like they, Dragon Ball Z. Like they keep evolving. You know, uh-huh. He reaches new power levels. And got it. He, got they it. They keep evolving. Listen, you. I'm sure you loved the Avengers when it came out, and this was the biggest problem. The Avengers that didn't bother you, right? It just matters. I just want to know. Okay. I just want to know what okay, his powers fair are. Enough. If you ask me, if you ask me what Hulk's powers are, or or 
now even Thor's powers are. I can I can accurately tell you what their powers are. Loki's powers it's very Thor, up in Thor the air. Leveled up, right? He did level up, but it's it's like a very it's not it's a very like gradual like a very like distinctive level up. With with Loki, like he does new shit every movie he's in. Yeah, he his power is to be the most compelling character in any movie that he's in. He's like the best Gradia character. He's still the best villain Marvel's come up with, unless mm-hmm. I'm forgetting someone. Am I? Hopefully Thanos takes over because he's a weak weak villain that way. Who Loki? Yeah. I mean, he's 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 a gray area guy. It's awesome. Like when he was just the villain, he was maybe slightly weak. Mm-hmm. But when he's like on the sides, you know, you don't know which way he's gonna go, and it's always the wrong way. Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. Somewhat predictable, but also not. It's the best. He's the best gray area character there is. I guess so. And talk about Thor's level up here. His Super Saiyan mode. He conveniently goes Thunder mode when he's getting his ass whooped. Ah! <laughs> He like he literally goes all Indra Bhagwan on like Hulk. I don't know. <laughs> like, all of a sudden, for those who don't know, Indra Bhagwan is or Lord Indra is India's version of Thunder God, and all of a sudden he's getting his butt whooped and he sees flashes of his dad. And like, yep, Thunder mode. Yeah, that's like every superhero story, anything ever. Wonder Woman's the same way. I mean, everything from Marvel. If you're gonna give me that, then or or DC or these superhero movies that didn't work, it's not a good example to give, is it? It all. And Goku's the same way. Goku's the same way, isn't he? I guess. That's how it is. That's how these superhero stories So, work. like, you get pushed to the limit and then you just, like, you unlock this. That's exactly it. You don't understand this if you'd ever can I, can I give adversity you, in your life. Can I give you a chokehold? Get you to the brink of death. Did you say chokehold? Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> very, very violent. Get you to the brink of death and just to see if you have, you're harboring any secret superpowers. I'm done. Oh, let's do it. I've always wanted to go blonde. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it, man. Let's do it. That's how it works, man. That's how these stories work, you know. And Wonder Woman was the same way. Thor was the same way. Uh-huh. Worked. Worked for me. Worked for you. Can we get back to some of the characters we haven't spoken about yet? Sure, sure. Let's do it. Mainly, I think we're forgetting one. Korg. Korg. Hi, Larius. Hi, Larius. I wish I could do his accent. Hmm? The foundations are fine. We hey. can rebuild it again. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, hey, man. I have rocks, but don't let that intimidate you. Hey, man. That's all I can do. Hey, man. But the best Korg line was, of course, when Loki appears. And then Korg chases after him and says, piss off, ghost. <laughs> <laughs> it's too good. And that's why Taika Waititi played him. You know, it's the most hilarious character. He also made this really cool reference because I'd seen what we do in the shadows now uh-huh. when I watched it again. And he made this really cool reference to this. Like He's like, hey, do you want this uh, wooden spear to fight with uh, the champion? Uh, not very useful unless you are trying to kill three vampires huddled very close together. And <laughs> oh, uh, what we do movie. in the shadows is about three vampires who live together. That's what I mean about the humor falling flat, man. That entire scene when he's choosing a weapon, but they talk about his hammer. Oh, you write the hammer? Oh, oh, the hammer? Oh, it, it takes you off? A joke? Whatever. It's a, Isn't it like a PG-13 movie, by the way? Um, I don't know. Yeah, it must be. Uh, they're telling kids about jerking off and stuff, man. That's not cool. Disney's been telling kids how to jerk off, like, through subtext for years and years and years. This wasn't subtext. This was blatant. Yeah, so what? It's fine. I don't know, man. I didn't I didn't like Korg that much, honestly. I think he was overused. Um, He could have he could have maybe had a couple of scenes lesser. The only time I didn't like Korg is when he made that joke right at the end about the foundation and Asgard. I think that was stretching it. I must confess. You must? I must confess. Okay, thank you for doing that. <laughs> he should have shut the hell up. I totally forgot. Hella, dude. Kate Blanchett is having so much fun in this role. She's rocking it. Apparently, she learned like capoeira or something to like give the character the way it feels. Ooh. <laughs> With the antlers and the green and the smile and the jumping. And Where was she? Wait, wait, wait. I, I, I think I missed this part. Where was she all this while? What do you mean? Where was she? She's just st- hidden away in some other realm. And then all of a sudden she she broke free or what what happened exactly? Did you watch the movie? It's because Odin dies. Oh, so if Odin dies, she's free? Yeah, Odin cast some spell or some shit. And then, and then, but then Odin clearly didn't have to die. He was just like, oh, I have a different path. Peace out. It was his time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Works. Piss works. off. Piss off, Odin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. And it's like, you know, uh, this whole thing about... You know, like, oh, the captain got his shield broken in Civil War and then Thor got his hammer broken in this movie. Marvel and these guys really need to figure out, like, how to show character building using, you know, like, less commonly used plot lines and stuff. Yeah, but it is. These are broad movies. These are broad stories. That's how it happens, you know. I guess. I mean, sure, you can give an answer for everything. So whatever, bro. Last character, Tessa Thompson as Valkyrie. Now, I must admit, (laughs) there's a reason I brought it up last. I didn't think too much of her 
in her like portrayal and character and stuff but really refreshing to see a woman role in that sense i don't know if you appreciated this while you were watching it also the whole concept of the valkyries right yeah for sure whole concept of the valkyries also i really like that uh, one like zack snyder type scene in the middle when the valkyries right. are fighting that's that's like, when that's when loki does the spock move yeah 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 so that was really fun but you know like thor becomes a damsel in distress and and she comes and rescues him and then she's like obviously like a great fighter predictable arc maybe so the fact that she's drunk you know very much blurring the lines between the typical female and male characterization in these scenarios i, I, really I like agree, that i agree with everything i agree with everything that you're saying but they could have just gotten a better actor yes yes i like the use of the word actor instead of actress there very thank well you. done thank you uh, just to add to that uh, I, i'll concede a little bit because i didn't like the portrayal too much either some people loved it by the way but uh, there was also a deleted scene where uh, she was uh, shown as bisexual which is also pretty cool i think yeah better actor Yeah, but actor would have been great. Sure, 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 sure. Doesn't take away from how hella good this movie is. That's right. I said it twice. <laughs> <laughs> this movie was just like a comic book, man. It's just super fun. Just loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. And you know, it's hard to make a comedy. Like it is a hard task to make a comedy. They're not easy to make. Have you heard this expression, by the way? I forget who. Uh, it's very apocryphal. Like who actually said it? Uh, but this guy, Edmund Keen, an actor, supposedly uh, was on his deathbed. and they said like uh oh mr admin like uh, you okay like how do you feel like is it is it hard you know like is it is it a, it's very difficult for you right now and he just goes like dying is easy comedy is hard <laughs> really <laughs> and uh, i just feel that way about uh, comedy movies especially right now given how the theatrical system works because people go for like tentpole movies mm-hmm. it's hard to go to a theater and watch comedy you know they just I don't agree. make agree. 50 million dollar yeah. comedies anymore hangover style in fact i remember in deadpool being very aware of the hit miss ratio for the jokes and in this movie i wasn't as aware i was actually more immersed and just laughing along the way i would go as far as to say this is our generation's ghostbusters okay Let's talk in fifteen years and see <laughs> if you even remember this movie remotely. <laughs> if this movie had Bill Murray, it would have been our generation's Ghostbusters. I guess. So wait, are you saying Chris Hemsworth is our generation's Bill Murray? No, I am not. He is much hotter. Much hotter. Many hots. Many hots. I get it. I hate this movie. I'm going to set like a reminder for like ten years from now when the Vidur says Thor Ragnarok is the Ghostbuster of our times. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to like call you. This up is that. going out into the internet. It's never going to get wiped out. No worry. reminder, just so that I remember. And and ten years later, I'm going to give you a call. It's like, hey, do you remember Thor Ragnarok? Dude, like ten what? years later, you will be calling me and telling me how good like Thor Seven was. <laughs> <laughs> Best movie ever. I guess. I guess. Yeah. Taika Waititi will make his return, and everybody will be super excited, and then it's going to uh-huh. like take it to a whole new level. Surely, surely. Okay, fine, fine. You want to make a closing statement as to your thoughts about this movie? This movie is absolute buns, buns. It is. Uh, I mean, I've 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 made enough points. I know the good listeners out there will reciprocate with that. So I don't need to like. Just to be some... clear, we don't have any bad listeners. You don't need to qualify it. Okay, our listeners out there. I just wanted to, you know, like oh, the good people, the good. Oh, folk. the good folk. Yeah, I yeah. see, I see. So let me make my summary. Okay, yeah, sure. Because you need summary. to make one. Everything was so weak about this movie. You need to like. Put words out there. My right. my closing argument is very simple. Hello, uh, good, and it uh, slightly risks copyright infringement, but so that wraps up this episode of Film Feud. Hope you guys enjoyed our feud, and uh, we feuded. Now it's time for you to decide. You have to vote and let us know who you think won the feud. Moi. Well, you say moi, and I say moi, but now it's up to the listeners to decide <laughs> who won. Is it moi, Vidur, for the movie, for Thor? Just the rhyming alone should make me win. Uh-huh. Plus uh-huh. the amazing points I made. Uh-huh. Or is it Vikram, who is just uh, a buzzkill? You guys can reach out to us on Twitter at Film Feud Pod and let us know who you think won this feud. That's Film Feud Pod at Film Feud Pod on Twitter, or you can reach out to us on our website. That's Manchamedia dot com. And go to Film Feud, or you can write to us at filmfeud at manchamedia dot com. So many ways, guys. You can figure it out. Just let us know who you think won, and make sure you tune in next week. Bye bye. See ya. Bye. See ya. Bye. See ya.